All right, guys, welcome to Sebi's Random Tech. In today's video, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of a revisit with our Lenovo ThinkPad X230. Some of you might remember the video I made about this laptop last year. I made two videos, the first of which I upgraded the display to an IPS display, and the second video where I replaced the chiclet-style keyboard with a classic X220 keyboard and the X220 palm rest. I also flashed the embedded controller in order to get all of the keys working properly. It's been about a year since I made that video, and since then the X230 has been one of my favorite laptops to use. It's been my daily driver for school for most of the past year, with the only exception being a few times I whipped out an X240, a T430, or a T440 just to spice things up. But this is pretty much my favorite laptop to type notes on and do other work. Unfortunately, recently, we had a little accident with this ThinkPad where the screen broke. I don't know how this happened. I don't remember dropping it, and I can't remember a time I threw my book bag around in a way that would have damaged the laptop. And sure enough, there's no signs of damage on the laptop anywhere, such as a dent in the top lid, or even a noticeable crack in the display. I mean, obviously the display is cracked, but you can't feel any sort of crack when you run across it with your fingers. Nonetheless, this crack has left the display basically useless. You can't even see anything on the left side, and the right side can get pretty garbled. So we're going to replace it. There's only one problem. The price of X230 IPS displays has gone up a significant amount in the last year. When I bought this display last year, I paid $65 for it. Now, upon checking eBay and Amazon, the cheapest IPS displays for the X230 that I could find were almost $90. That's a pretty significant price jump. I still have the original TN panel that I removed from this machine when I upgraded its display, but I don't want to go back to that. We have a few other choices when it comes to replacing the X230's display if we really want the IPS display. A few of Lenovo's other laptops from the time use the exact same 12.5 inch IPS display that the X230 uses. The first of which is the ThinkPad Twist S230, which shares a very similar numbering scheme to the X230 and bears a striking resemblance to the X230 tablet, which we'll get to in a minute. With a little bit of work, you can take this apart, disassemble the touchscreen assembly, and voila, you have yourself a standard non-touch display at the base of everything. That leads us to the X230 tablet. These machines also used IPS displays, and the same ones that the non-touch X230 uses. I happened to get a hold of two of these machines recently for a very cheap price, they're in rough shape. The first one I think will clean up fairly nicely. It's in cosmetically decent shape, other than a few slight scuffs and scratches here and there, and the palm rest will need replaced. But it works and everything, it powers on, and when I popped in a Windows installation, the touch functionality worked perfectly. These are also the nicer multi-touch displays that allows you to use your fingers instead of a pen. Unfortunately, the second X230 tablet has definitely seen better days and is in very rough shape. The keyboard and touchpad are extremely worn out, and the palm rest is cracked in a number of places. The display hinges are pretty wobbly, and the display assembly itself has definitely taken a beating. There's a chip cracked out of the corner here. The entire top section here is breaking off, though this was a common problem with pretty much every X-Series ThinkPad from the X200 through the X230. There's also a huge gash in the back here, which has no doubt caused this crack in the front glass of the display housing. Thankfully, this glass is actually a separate layer from the IPS display inside. And with a little bit of work, we can take this machine apart and get at it. I do feel kind of bad for using the less common X230 tablet as an organ donor for my own X230, but this display assembly is pretty much going to need replacing. It's only good for spare parts at this point. Plus, as you'll see in a few minutes, it's just easier to replace the entire display assembly than to try and extract the original display from inside and use it in another assembly. So without further ado, let's get started. Of course you want to make sure to shut down the computer before you do any work and disconnect all sources of power, including the DC power adapter and the internal battery. If you leave any sources of power connected to any laptop when you're changing out a screen, you're going to blow your backlight fuse, and then you're going to be pretty much in the dark unless you're good at soldering. There are three round stickers on the front, one located here, one here, and one here, which each have a hidden Phillips screw underneath. 
There's also one hidden screw on each side of the display. These are housed under these rectangular stickers. Once you get those off, this front cover will pop off pretty easily. But be careful, because if your model has a fingerprint reader, which I'm pretty sure all X230 tablets do, you could break the cable or the reader if you're not careful. You also see one of the things I do like about the X230 tablet's design, front firing speakers. You will also need to remove a few screws holding in this LED board, which houses the indicator LEDs as well as some of the front facing buttons on the tablet's screen. There will be a few connectors you have to remove as well. Next, on each side of the display housing, there are three more of these hidden screws underneath those rectangular stickers. Pop the stickers off and get the screws out. Now comes one of the trickier parts, especially if you're trying to keep the original display assembly intact. A mixture of snaps and adhesives holds the front glass and the screen to the back of the display housing. I ended up breaking a lot of the tabs that hold the two sides together. But since this assembly was in really bad shape, I didn't care. But for someone who's trying to preserve the original display housing, you might want to be careful. Just be careful not to puncture the screen in the process. At this time, you will also want to disconnect the display connector that connects the laptop's motherboard to the display, as well as the digitizer's connector, which is a smaller cable on the other side. The next task is to disconnect the display from the front glass. This is not too difficult, it just takes a little bit of time and patience. There's basically a foam adhesive all around the border of the screen connecting it to the outer glass. I found that just by taking a plastic plying tool and going around each side slowly, I was able to get it off. Now, I was a little bit impatient with this. I honestly should have taken my time a little bit more than this, but I did not break my screen in the process, so all is well that ends well, I guess. Now we can start to disconnect the digitizer from the display. Contrary to what you would think, the digitizer is actually on the back of the display, which really surprised me. How exactly this works is still beyond me, but it's pretty cool. My display had these four pieces of black tape in each corner. I carefully peeled those up. Then I started to remove the adhesive on each side of the display. Don't worry, this is not part of the actual display. It is only keeping the digitizer connected to the display. Be slow, be gentle, and try to avoid putting a lot of pressure on this bottom part of the display, where the display's connector plugs in. Once you've gotten around to each side, you should be able to just peel off the digitizer. You can even sort of see the grid pattern on it, which is used to detect your fingerprints and the stylus pen. Chances are, if you're like me and this is your first time doing this, there might be some leftover adhesive around the borders of the screen, which at this point is just the bare IPS display, exactly the same as what would be put in a non-tablet X230. Now comes time to transplant our display into the non-tablet X230. I won't spend too much time on this since I already made a video about this topic a year ago. This is quite deja vu for me. But the process is very simple. Like the X230 tablet, there are a few hidden screws you'll have to find before you can take the front bezel off. But it's much easier in this case. You just have two hidden screws on the front. Once you've removed them, you can simply pop off the entire display bezel. Then there are four screws holding the old display in place, which you remove. Pull the display down as if you're closing the laptop, and then carefully peel up and disconnect the display cable. Get your new display, line it up, and plug the cable back into its connector. Then pop the screen up, and this is where I like to test the laptop to make sure everything's working before I get everything back together. Once you've verified that the display connector is plugged in in order to avoid blowing out your backlight fuse, connect a source of power and turn the system on. As you can see, I have a working display. So you can get the rest of your screws and fasten the display back in place, put the front bezel back on, put the screws back in, and place the stickers back in place. And well, what do I have to say? It's an IPS display. I already made a video about this. It looks a lot better than the TN panels that you often shipped with. Now I did not do a perfect job with this, 
as I really wasn't taking my time, and it was my first time doing it. So if you've learned anything from me, take your time, especially if it's your first time doing this. Extracting a display from a touchscreen assembly isn't an easy task. This isn't as difficult as, say, an iPhone screen where the digitizer and the LCD are bonded together, but it still takes some time and patience, and if you're not being careful, you can end up breaking your screen. But it is a pretty good way to get a nice IPS screen in your system without breaking the bank. And if you don't mind spending the extra time it takes to extract the display from a touchscreen assembly, then I'd say it's worth the money saved especially when you can buy some of these display assemblies for less than half of the cost of a single IPS display for your X230. The above process should also work with X220 tablet displays and X220 systems, as they essentially share the same chassis with their X230 counterparts. I should also note that this does have a little bit of backlight bleed on the bottom. It was like that with my old display too, and before putting this display into the X230, I did notice this when I tested the X230 tablet. There's also one or two small pressure spots on the display, but those were there before I made the transplant, so it wasn't my doing, surprisingly. What can I say though? Now I have a working X230 with a beautiful screen again. Maybe someday I'll get around to doing that 1080p modification for these machines, but that involves soldering, and I'm not too comfortable doing that, so we'll see. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and be sure to stay tuned for more in the future.